I was so confident I was doing these switch boxes right. I feel pretty dumb right now. This is Simple Living with Theata. I've been building my dream home and homestead from scratch for the last few years. If you're new here, I post mostly every Sunday about my DIY build journey. So if you love learning the process of building or homesteading or just all things DIY, hit the subscribe and like button. It's a huge help. It's my goal to finish up the wiring this week. Well, not like fully finish it up, but get it to a point where Eddie can come back and teach me how to hook things up properly. So next up, I'm going to do the master bedroom. We've got a fan, four pot lights, and two sconces. This is our storage room right now, so please don't mind everything in here. I have to get the feed from the panel over to the switch box. I'm gonna just put in a runner board here because I have a few wires going this way. So I'll get the runner board up first and then bring the wires over. How do you do this with ducting everywhere? <laughs> Just as a disclaimer, I am not an electrician. I do have a permit pulled to be able to do the wiring on my home, but this is not an educational video. This is just for entertainment purposes. The hardest part about electrical so far is getting your body into all of these tiny spaces. I think that's why I threw my back the other week. Actually, that's a lie. The hardest part about electrical so far is bringing in the large ass mains. That was painful. The feed line is officially in the bedroom. Time to wire the master bedroom. Bedroom. Again, for the master bedroom, we are centering the fan to the center of the window, even though the window is not centered to the wall, but it kind of almost is. The closet is going to be two feet off of the wall, so it's like nearly center. The fan would be here to be in the center of the room, so may as well just line it up with the window. It's a little bit off center with the truss over above, but hopefully you won't be able to tell. And the closets aren't framed in because we're going with built-in cabinetry, so we have to deal with that still. Womp womp. <laughs> Run out of 14 too. I'm gonna keep hiring along. Not much else you can do. Time to get to wiring. The pots are done, but when I was using my rolly cart, I smashed into this sad day. From the bedroom, I'm going to go up to the living room fan. Anything that helps me with mental clarity and mental performance right now is a friend of mine and Magic Mind is just that. It's 12 active ingredients include nootropics, adaptogens, and matcha that not only gives you energy without the caffeine crash, but my main purpose for drinking it is the incredible hyperfocus and it really helps my brain to problem solve much more quickly. Whether I'm editing my videos or wiring my home, I feel like I'm constantly getting stuck in this loop going on in my head but I notice a huge difference when I drink Magic Mind consistently. I do cleaning tasks a lot more easily and I don't feel like I'm getting trapped in my head. Magic Mind is not about a quick fix. It's about the long-term balance of productivity and less stress. Magic Mind is not your morning coffee replacement. It's in addition to your morning routine or as an afternoon pick-me-up. Some of its ingredients take three to four days to reach its full effect, so it's recommended you take Magic Mind daily for a week to see how you feel. Use Beata 20 to get poor 48% off of your first subscription for the next 10 days. Head over to magicmind.com backslash Beata, linked in my description and in the pinned comment below. Next, I'm bringing power from this side of the house all the way over to the bathroom. I'm so close to being done all of the lights. I'm gonna go inside, eat some lunch, make one more decision, and then I should be ready to wire the last set of lights for the house. I ate my food, I went over my drawing, I got the dimensions for the fixtures that I'm gonna have in the kitchen. Look at how cute it is. I think I'm just gonna go with these two sconces beside this window for a little bit of extra light while doing the dishes. So those are gonna be on this side and then on this side here. I don't think I'm actually gonna go with the sconces anymore. I originally drew them in, but I don't think I'll need them because I do have the two pot lights above like the stove and the kitchen area. 
All right, this is gonna be a little bit tricky because I kinda need to go outside and then feed the line back in without actually going outside. Like the wire has to go outside. We'll see how this goes. There we go. Gonna make like a little bit of a hook. That's not gonna happen. Might have to take a ladder outside. I tried. I'm just gonna have to go set the ladder up outside. You may think I've gotten over my fear of heights, but I truly have not. I've just rationalized it so that like if I'm on a harness, I know I'm safe, but that, I didn't like that. Just like, I just love living here. It's a new day. It's actually the weekend. So I've been working away on pulling all the wire. I have all the lights up now and we're having Eddie and his wife over for dinner and their twins. And he's gonna show me how to hook up some switches and then we're gonna hang out. We're gonna have dinner in the house and pull in our patio furniture and our table to be able to eat in here and keep the twins out of the weather and the bugs and learn how to do switches. So when I first put this wall partition in here, I was thinking we were gonna have a framed in closet and we changed our mind to the cabinetry closet. So what I'm gonna do is take this stud and the two by four out and then that way there's a spot for the three gang switch box that I have to have in the bedroom. And then I'll know where I can put the three gang box in the living room for all the switches. I'm gonna reuse it, so yeah. keep it nearby. So I've learned through a bunch of comments to make sure to leave room for trim so you don't put the box right up against your two studs. Put a little blocker in between and then that way you're not having to like cut out your trim. So thank you for that. Over there. Over here. They're here, I get to meet the babies for the first time. <laughs> so that screws here? Yeah. They pretty much just hinge. Oh, it's only one screw, cool. Yeah, on each side. Good morning! Today's the day I'm going to start wiring these switch boxes together to get ready for my rough and inspection. I do have some changes that I need to make, just two that I messed up when it comes to three-way switching because it is confusing. And it's the exact same mistake in two spots. <laughs> the hallway light is gonna be a three-way switch. So a three-way switch is where it switches in two separate locations. Now there are multiple ways to do three-way, four-way switching. I've been taught the one way, if you do it a different way, that's okay. With three-way switching, the difference is there's a common wire. You require the common wire in each switch box. Your common on each switch box is always going to be coming from your two-way wire. Your three the way wire is the traveler that tells the box whether to turn on or off, if that makes sense. So there's gonna be a switch box right here. It's gonna have the switches for my kitchen pot lights, my living room pot lights, and for this hallway light. The issue is I don't have a two-way wire in this switch box that's for the hallway light. I either need to bring the power over here, which is the two-way wire, or I need to bring the hallway light over here. So I have to bring the hallway light feed to the switch box and the power line is already brought over to this side. So instead of having three wires here, I should only have two wires. And instead of only having the one wire here, I should have two wires.
I forgot to put in a little block to make a room for the trim that is potentially gonna be around this door. I don't know if I'm gonna go with trim yet. I'm still in the design phase, but we're gonna account for it. We have loops at the top here to be able to pull excess. I need a four gang box for this spot because I have three light switches and then I need the exhaust button to be within that as well. So instead of going with a four gang box, I'm going to make a four gang box with deeper boxes. Because with three-way switching, there are so many wires coming in and out you want a little bit more room so it's a little bit more expensive to do it this way but it's gonna be really nice to have that extra space there's no room over here My cutters have these little spots here to be able to cut the wire, which is kind of cool. First, I'm gonna install the ground wires to the back of the plate. And you put the wire on the right of the screw because it spins clockwise and you want it to pull the wire in versus if you had it on the left side, it would push the wire out as you screwed it in. Now it's time to put the neutrals together. Since the hallway light is on a completely different circuit than the kitchen pot lights and the living room pot lights, just these two neutrals are getting moretted together. And then all the neutrals from the other four wires, which are on a different circuit, get moretted together. So I've learned that you're supposed to twist your wires together because the morettes don't really do that great of a job. Also, I need better pliers for this. Mm, I needed more wire than that. What a learning curve. Okay. First thing I'm gonna do when I go into town today is get linesmen. They are apparently the pliers that you're supposed to use and I was like, oh, I'll just use regular pliers. Don't do that. And a morette. And then next up, I'm putting a morette on the black two-way wire because at any point this could be live. So it's just best practice, supposedly. And then they get rolled up for another time. And Eddie was telling me you can even write down what the switch is for in the bottom. That way, just in case, what if you forget what it is? All right, here comes the more complicated portion because there's so much going on here. Sometimes I'll say words like the common wire. I don't really know what that means quite yet. And that kind of thing, not fully knowing, not fully understanding really stressed me out in the past, but I'm just taking wiring one step at a time. As long as I'm getting things in the right places, wrapping the switch wires up together. I don't need to exactly understand what a common wire is. I know that there's a black screw on the switches that it goes into. But for now, this is all I need to know. Maybe one day I'll fully understand the concept of three-way switching, but for now, I'm just following the rules of three-way switching. So this is the switch side for the three-way switch for the hallway light, and this is the feed-in side. Again, you moret the whites together. So I have the neutrals and the grounds in for the bathroom. We have a sink light, pot lights, and a feed in and a feed out. So that being said, pigtails are needed.
think I'm finally starting to get the grasp of all of this. The three-way switches are still a little bit tricky, but stuff like that, that made sense. And because I know there's gonna be questions, this is the exhaust for the bathroom. So that will be a completely separate circuit. Good morning. I think I can get the rest of this wired today. So this is the first bedroom that I worked on wiring. And one of the things that I had decided to do was to put motion light sensors into the closets. I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> my main concern is that if I go to put laundry away in my daughter's room in the middle of the night, the light will turn on and will wake her up. And my husband and I go to bed at separate times, so same thing there. I thought the motion lights were a really good idea, but now that I'm like, oh, but does it actually work for our family? And it really doesn't. They're also not deep closets. They're not walk-in closets. They're little cabinetry closets. I'm gonna eventually take that down I'm not gonna wire it into this whole room. The other issue here is that there's only room for four wires. Down here, there's absolutely no room because I had to make room for the recessed mirror that's going in here. And maybe I could drill a hole through here to get the fifth wire in. But I honestly just don't think these lights are necessary. So what I've learned is you can either put an extra loop here below your staple or put an extra loop up in the attic. The reason why I've been going with the loop right here is because it's gonna be a lot easier to pull this loop than it will be to pull through the staples all the way up into the attic. It can work really well to pull from the attic when you have these kinds of staples, but I'm not using them everywhere. These are just a little bit more loose. Also like that when you're at this stage, you can pull your line out a little bit, make your little cut, strip off the rest, and then put it back up to where it gets screwed into the back. I don't know if you guys know Carly the Sparky on Instagram, but I love her wiring work. It is beautiful. <laughs> She's my inspiration for how, what panels are supposed to look like and switch boxes. And I know that seems a little bit extra bougie, but it's nice when things look neat, right? I also went out last night and got myself a pair of linesmen. I did not buy the $60 ones. I bought the $20 ones. I don't know why they were $60. They were like a huge price range between them, but I went with the cheaper ones because they looked the same. <laughs> Well, these are definitely easier than the pair I was using yesterday. Wow, okay. They've got all these little grippies, that makes sense. I was so confident I was doing these switch boxes right until I sent a picture to Eddie of one of the boxes and he was like, wait, you only have one line going to your switch. So let's go back and watch me wire my first single pole switch. Basically the pigtail is going to be redded with the feed in and it's also going to be redded with the sink and the pot lights all together. Three-way switches are still a little bit tricky, but stuff like that, that made sense. That made sense. So I figured it out. I mean, he helped me figure it out. Basically what I did is I took the line coming from the light and I meredded it in and then I just left the pigtail out. You are not supposed to do that. You're supposed to leave the line that's coming from your light, not have it redded, and wrap it up with the pigtail and both of those two lines are gonna go to the switches. The only things that needed to be meredded together here are the feed in, the feed out, and the pigtail. I told Eddie I feel pretty dumb right now, but he was like switching is the hardest thing to learn. 
So it's just one of those things that takes experience. I have to go back and redo some of the lines in the other boxes, but you know what? I try to be honest on my channel about my learning curves and my mistakes and everything. So it just, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> this one is the black line coming right from the fan. And then this is the pigtail. So the pigtail brings power to the switch and then this line brings it to the fan. That makes sense now. When you don't know, you don't know. So now we have feed in, feed out, and the pigtail. Then we have the line coming from the fan and the pigtail. I did this side right though for the pot light. So I started messing up after I was done doing the three-way switching. I still did the three-way switching properly when I moved on to this side, but like three-way switching messed up my regular switching. Eddie was saying, this is why apprentices don't even touch wire for a very long time. Thank you so much for watching this week of me figuring switches out, making mistakes, learning from them. This has truly just been such an incredible journey. I have loved learning electrical. And just a reminder for extra productivity and less stress, check out Magic Mind linked in my description below for that 48% off your first month subscription using the code BEATA20. And hopefully, I can get the rest of the wiring done and inspected next week. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna try to get it all done in one video for you guys. Will I pass inspection? See you next week.